Hello everybody, welcome to our video on tariffs and trade. We're going to pick up where we left off in our last video, where we had free trade in our market. Uh, supply and demand curve have not changed. We, I already have the solutions for autarky and free trade. One thing we saw was that even though total surplus rose with trade, it went up, it made society better off overall. Uh, we also noticed that it made our producers worse off. Trade hurts, or importing, in this case, because our world price is low, hurts our producers. Granted, if it, if it were an export market, it would hurt our consumers. The op arguments would flip a bit, but let's not worry about that. Uh, in this situation, we're going to be dealing with a case where we're going to try to protect our producers by imposing a tariff. And I'm going to say tariff of $20. World price, whoops, that's a beta, not a P. World price is still 100, which means our world price plus our tariff, the price our, cus our people have to pay is 120. So for our consumers to buy something overseas, it will cost $120. The reason we're doing this is we wanna help our producers to not just have this little bit of surplus, but to be able to sell more stuff at a higher price by being able to compete easier with the rest of the world. Uh, so let's figure out what this is going to look like first, though. Our quantity demanded is equal to 200 minus price, 120. So that's the price our consumers are paying, is 80. Our quantity supplied is equal to one half times our price that our people are competing with. So 120 minus 10 is 50. And the first thing we're going to see is that where imports used to be 60 units of the good, now it's just 30. So our tariff is definitely reducing trade. Let's see, let me write these in here real quick. QD with tariff is equal to 80. QS with tariff is equal to 50. All right, let's calculate consumer and producer surpluses. So what we're gonna do, I guess I'll shade it first just for good measure. Uh, consumer surplus is everything below the demand curve and above price. So it's all that stuff. We've seen that kind of picture before. Consumer surplus is one half times 80. That's how far across the bottom of the triangle is. Times, let's see, it's $80 high. One half times 80 times 80 is 3,200. Cool. Producer surplus as I already shaded earlier, is all this stuff. Everything below price, above the supply curve. Uh, it's us selling above our willingness to pay, uh, above our willingness to sell. And it is equal to, one half, let's see, that thing is $50 high, and it's a hundred, sorry, it's $50 across and a hundred dollars high. So that's gonna be 2,500. Okay, so let's point out a couple of things here real quick. Did we protect our producers? Oops, marker. Yeah, at least to some extent. Producer surplus is higher with the tariff than without. It shields them from competitive pressures from overseas. This comes at the expense of our consumers who now receive less surplus than they would have otherwise. But we're not yet ready to calculate total surplus to see how society is faring from all of this. Uh, for total surplus, we got one more piece. There's other money flying around this market. And that's going to be tax revenue. Uncle Sam gets something too. And we're going to count that in our surplus because it is a benefit to society. Uh, so tax revenue, 
is twenty dollars per import and we imported 30 so twenty dollars times 30 is 600 uncle sam brings home 600 dollars now where do we show that on this market well we're importing between here and here between 50 and 80 and our tariff is that high the $20 gap between the world price and the world price plus tariff. And so our shaded area for government is this. That is our tax revenue. Uh, that's, oh, and I never wrote producer surplus. Yeah. Now it's all official and crappy. Cool. So next bit then, tax revenue equals 600. And our total surplus then is equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus plus tax revenue. Now that wasn't included in these graphs or in these examples earlier because there wasn't any taxing. But if there was, it would be. We're not adding anything new. There's just a more complicated model now. Uh, and that's going to be equal to 6,300. Okay, so a couple of things for us to point out now. We know that this protects our producers and it harms our consumers. One thing we're going to see is that the net effect on society is a loss. If you tax an efficient market, it will make it less efficient. Uh, our deadweight loss, uh, we haven't talked about that yet. A deadweight loss is just a loss in surplus in your market. Uh, in this case, surplus went down by 300. Now, where does that show up on the graph? It shows up in this area, which was all shaded in under free trade and now is not. So dead weight loss is there. I'm going to erase that because it makes it look like I'm trying to say it's tax revenue. Yeah, so once we impose these trade restrictions, it made for less overall surplus in the market. So uh, I think that's all I want to do for this video. I hope it was useful to you. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching.